1989 taping of It Happened in Grand Prairie, as we bring you history of Grand Prairie, Texas, and people that have caused it to happen over the past. And we are extremely delighted today to bring one of really what you would call the first ladies of Grand Prairie in the business world. Burnaby Waddell, we want to welcome you to the show today. Nice to be here. Verna Waddell, long-standing name in our community, and it relates to community service, business, uh, philanthropic things. And today we want to let you get your role in the historical archives as far as the genealogy is concerned. And would you look out into your camera and tell us, Verna Waddell, and something about your beginnings, the history, your genealogy that you'd like to have on this tape. Would you do that for us? Well, my maiden name was Brill Hart, and I was born March the 12th, 1917. So I am an old timer. And uh, my Brill Hart name was researched by a former pastor. When he retired, he uh, developed this history of the Brill Hart family and I want to tell you how far he has gone back in his history. He starts with a Johannes Brill, 1448, a city of Einstadt, Germany. He was a young man who had a wife and four small children. And due to religious persecution, they uh, uh, were very severely uh, punished if they did not obey the concepts of, of the religion at that time. And from religious persecution, he was killed. So his widow and her four children, uh, Mrs. Brill, uh, fled to a place other than Einstein, Germany, and met a man by the name of Hart. And they were united in marriage, and according to a custom of the time, the name was combined. So that's where Brill Hart came from. Wonderful. And then he goes on to trace it down through to um, a man by the name of David Brill Hart, landed at Jamestown, according to the records there. So that was in about the 1600s. All right, now, Verna, you mentioned your birth date and you have given us a wonderful dissertation on the Brill Hearts. What would you name your parents so that we can get them in our genealogy record and where they were born? A little something about your parents, both of them. Yes, my father's name was Adam Joseph Brill Hart. Okay. And he was born in Ohio. Mm -hmm. And he came to Oklahoma with his parents, John Wesley and Regina Brill Hart. Mm -hmm. And they settled around the Kiowa County area. That's where I'm was born to in Kiowa County, Oklahoma. And my mother's people uh, came from Kansas, and but he met her uh, in a nearby a little town of Mountain View. Mountain View, Oklahoma? Mountain View, Oklahoma. Would you give us her full name so we'll have that in the record? Annie, Anna Dalkey. And spell Dalkey for the... B-A-L-K-E. Okay. It's a German name. Okay. And they were married in 1907 mm -hmm. when Oklahoma was still a territory. Oh, that is Just before it entered statehood. All right. And then your parents in Oklahoma, how long did they remain there? And what brought them uh, on another direction? Well, they, my father was a farmer. All right. And, and uh, they stayed there. They didn't uh, right. move around. All right. And uh, of my family, there were six children, three boys and three girls. And at this time, there's two girls and one son still living. Would you name the, uh, the children in order of their birth in the record, their first names, please? Yes. Elmer Wesley was the oldest. Melvin John the second, Velma Irene the third, I was the fourth, Verna. Uh, then uh, my younger brother was Efton, and then Ann was the youngest. All right, and name the ones that are now living and where they live at this time. Melvin lives on a farm in Kiowa County, Oklahoma. All right. Velma lives in uh, uh, Oklahoma, she is a retired school teacher. She lives just south of Oklahoma City. 
And, of course, I live in Grand Prairie. All right. And we're three surviving ones. You're the three surviving ones. All right. Now, tell me about Verna Waddell going to school, possibly, in Kiowa County in Oklahoma. Uh, where did you start to school, Verna? At Big Elk. Now, Big Elk. That, that was named after a, a creek there, Big Elk School. And then we moved um, two miles farther east and onto my grandfather's uh, place. And then I went to Pleasant Grove mm -hmm. uh, Country School. And your grandfather was which of your grandparents? Uh, John Wesley uh, Burlhart, my dad's dad. All right, and his wife? Regina. All right, you want to hold up a picture of them on this wonderful plate since those are your grandparents and you lived nearby? Yes. Uh, we, we know that that is an exciting uh, genealogy plate that's done in China. And isn't that a, a wonderful thing, a piece of memorabilia to have? A cousin of mine was into ceramics and did this. Now, I, my dad was the oldest child, so I come from this top branch. And uh, it, all, of, all of we children are listed in this. All right, and I believe in your Brillhart book, you do have a picture of your parents. Could you flip to that and, and hold that up so that we could maybe get that on camera? That would be very exciting if we could find your parents and they're in the Brillhart book and put your finger under this one. These, are, these are my parents. Give their names one more time. Adam and Anna Brillhart. Oh, that is. And I have a reunion every year in the spring on Memorial Day, Adam and Anna Brillhart reunion, and all, all of our family. It comes. All right. Do you hold that here in Grand Prairie or do you go to Prairie. Oklahoma? No, they, they come here for that. <laughs> come to your house here for that. Okay. I have a lot of nieces and nephews that live here now, too. All right. Now let's get to Judge Arthur Harold Waddell. Let's have a little history about him, and then we're going to get you back up in Oklahoma and bring you down toward Texas and see what happened to you. But let's trace him into this, would you? All right. Well, it still starts in Oklahoma. Okay. I met him in college. We both went to Stillwater, Oklahoma, when it was Oklahoma Agriculture and Mechanical College. All right. It's now Oklahoma State University. Uh, his roommate and my roommate were going together, and they arranged a blind date for us, so that's how I met Arthur Harold Waddell. Okay, well give us a little history about uh, him and about his parents and et cetera. Well, um, his parents came from Missouri. In fact, his, both of them were born in Ashgrove, Missouri, and uh, they moved to Oklahoma. Uh, Mr. Waddell was a, a horticulturist, and he taught at the Indian School, Shalaka, Oklahoma, which is just inside the Oklahoma line from Kansas. And uh, uh, they had only the two children, Mildred, the older sister, and uh, she was 10 years older than, than Arthur. And she is deceased, and, and both of his parents are deceased. All right, and your mother's full name, including the maiden name. His, his mother. His mother. His mother. Gertrude Rebecca Justice. And spell Justice. J-U-S-T-I-C-E, just like it. All right, and uh, where did she migrate from, or was she an Oklahoma? Uh, no, she was a Missourian, too. Oh, she came from Missouri also. Mm -hmm. All right, and came to Oklahoma and settled there. and uh, After their marriage. After their marriage, and there were two children, Arthur and his sister. Yes. All right. Now, and you met Arthur Waddell when he was in college. Uh, where did he go to school prior to that? He went to Arkansas City uh, Junior College. He graduated from Arkansas City High School and then Junior College two years and then to Stillwater t to finish. Uh, he got his degree, Bachelor of Science, in 1935. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, it was 19... 34, I guess, when we met. All right, and then you all married in what year? And tell us about your family. 1936, a centennial year for Texas. All right. And the reason that we came to Texas, he had a job with Homeowners Loan Corporation in Oklahoma City, and he was transferred from Oklahoma City to Dallas. Mm -hmm. And so we become, became Texans all right. uh, at that time. And what did you do? You came to the Dallas area and he was with the homeowners group. What did Verna B. Waddell do? Then? Well, I, I couldn't stand staying home with nothing to do, so I got a job too. All right. And then. Where was your first job then? Beard and Stone. It was an automotive supply house in Dallas, Texas. 
and I was in the accounting department. Mm -hmm. And I took care of the, uh, I posted the bills uh, payable. And all of this time you still had no children, right? No. All right. Then, um, did you have any more schooling after Beard and Stone? What, what did Verna do and what did Arthur do in Dallas? Well, we both worked during the day and we went to night school at night. He went to night school to get his law degree and I went to uh, SMU night school to finish my degree. Right. I was a junior when we were married and uh, I'd complained to one of my professors at this school that. It was taking me a long time to get a degree, and he said, well, if you live, you'll be older anyway, but if you get a degree, it depends on you. Well, that is wonderful. And then, when you did finally get your degree from SMU, what was the area of study? Uh, business administration. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration. Oh, that and we awesome. both got our degrees the same June of 1940. He got his LLB, and I got my BS. Okay, and then what happened to Verna and well, Judge Waddell? Then it was about the time the war, the Second World War started. All right, now and we're getting into the World War and era. Mm -hmm. What and happened to you two? Well, um, he went into the Navy he, right. uh, uh, as an ensign, and he got his uh, uh, 90 day wonder at Harvard mm -hmm. <laughs> a training. And we spent the winter up there. It was uh, real cold and snowy. We lived not too far from where he took his training. But when he'd have the duty, I'd have to shovel snow to get the car out to go pick him up when it's time mm -hmm. for him to get off. So I remember Boston as being very snowy. All right, did you work while you were in Boston or were no. you a homemaker? No, I just kept the little apartment that we had. All right, and when he finished his training there for the Navy, what happened next? Well, he was sent at first to uh, uh, New York, and we were there then for a while, New York City, and then he was sent all the way across to Seattle, Washington. Mm -hmm. And so that was uh, the rest of his tour of duty. Mm -hmm. And then uh, then he retired from the Navy from Seattle, Washington? Yes, and, uh, after and the war was and, over. All right, you and the judge after the war was over. Then what happened to you? Well, here you are in Seattle, and then what are you going to do, Verna? Well, without jobs or anything, we took a month to come back to Dallas. We saw mm -hmm. all the national parks and places of interest on the way from Seattle to Dallas. Okay. And uh, we went to my folks first. and. In uh, Oklahoma. In Oklahoma to visit just a short time, and then came back down here and through contacts, we both got jobs at War Assets Administration where they were disposing of the surplus mm -hmm. from the Army mm -hmm. goods. So that's how we came to Grand Prairie instead of back to Dallas. Mm -hmm. You know, housing was real scarce to find, and we mm -hmm. did find an apartment here in Grand Prairie. And where did you live when you first came to Grand Prairie in an apartment? At 310 North Center Street, which is demolished now, but uh -huh. it's just uh, north of the First Methodist Church. Oh, that sounds very, very exciting. And when you came to Grand Prairie in those early years, what did you think about it, Verna? I thought it was a very small town. Mm -hmm. In fact, I was crew leader for the census of 1950, and uh, we had about 15,000 population. That was all in mm -hmm. Grand Prairie. And how long did you work for the war assets, you and the judge both? Oh, I'd say about a... A year or two, no, about a year and a half, I guess. And then it gradually folded down. And before it closed, um, I sent off to get my realtor, uh, real estate license. Mm -hmm. And all you had to do then was get three people that could testify as to your good character. You didn't have to take an exam or anything else. How wonderful, Bernie. <laughs> and so I got a real estate license and opened my office, and I've had Waddell Real Estate for some 40 years now. And where did you open your 42. first real estate office, Verna? 115 North Center Street, Grand Prairie, right across the street from the First United Methodist Church. Mm -hmm. In the area of the Dr. Building. Shanks old building? Uh, it, it was the building belonged to the Shanks. To the Shanks. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is a very exciting historical thing. In all of these years, you've been into real estate. Well, when you were in real estate, what happened to... Uh, Mr. Waddell. Well, he uh, uh, had shared the same office. We had two small rooms side by side, mm -hmm. and he hung out his law shingle. 
So we had law and real estate. For the first time, he hung his first shingle in uh -huh. Grand Prairie, Texas. Right. That is wonderful. And he practiced law for how long? About 38 years. And in that uh, practice, uh, I do know that he was a municipal judge for the city of Grand Prairie. Tell us a little bit about his career, then we're going to get back to yours. All right. He was the first uh, corporation court judge All right. Grand Prairie mm -hmm. ever had. Uh, e. Carlisle Smith Sr. is the one that uh, uh, appointed him to this. Mm -hmm. And he was the mayor then? He was the mayor then. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm -hmm. And uh, it was a small beginning, and I believe that was in the early 1950s. I believe about mm -hmm. 1952 or 53. Well, was Judge Waddell, he must have been involved in community things to have known E. Carlisle Smith and some of the others. Um, read uh, that little pamphlet that you have there on Judge Waddell, and before you do, I want you to hold up this picture of you too. We won't tell the occasion, but we want uh, the camera to pick up you and Judge Waddell because there are many people in Grand Prairie, Texas that still remember that young man, and the fact that you have lost him to death is, uh, it's been hard to realize because he was so active in the community, and we wanted to get a, a shot of that before you well, talk I'm about Well, I'm pleased him. to tell what the occasion was. All this right. is when we were worthy matron and worthy patron of the Order of the Eastern Star, Chapter 219, here in Grand Prairie. Oh, that's great. Now, tell us a little bit more, though, about... All uh, right. Judge Waddell, would you do that for us? He was active in many things. Um, he served twice as president of the Grand Prairie Bar Association. He was very active in the Boy Scout. And our son, Joe, became an Eagle Scout under the time that the judge was so involved in scouting. Mm -hmm. And the judge was awarded the Silver Beaver, which is the oh. highest adult award. Oh, it is indeed. And he was a past commander of American Legion Post 184. and serving as a treasurer at the time of his death. Would you give us his death date on there also? August the 1st, 1984. All right, okay. Uh, he was a member of the Sam R. Hamilton and a, and a charter member of the Thomas B. Hunter Masonic Lodges. He was a 32nd degree Mason. He was a member of Dallas Scottish Rite, of Hella Temple Shrine, of the Arlington York Commandery, and he was a member of the First United Methodist Church where he served on the Board of Stewards. And uh, Reverend uh, Young held his service. That's wonderful. That, that's a wonderful reading of the obituary when it's actually a re rejoicing to think of all of the community things that he has done uh, in Grand Prairie, Texas. Now, in this, in the reading of this, you mentioned one thing that we haven't picked up in our interview. The children. You do have one child, and we need to know when, and the name, and some of the good stuff about your young son. Well, we have Arthur Joseph Waddell. He was born October 18, 1950. And uh, he's married now. His wife's name is Madeline. And they have two children. They have Arthur James Waddell, a son, and Marcy Claire Waddell, their daughter. All right, now you would tell us where the grandchildren go to school and maybe a little something about them since the, you're the doting grandmother, would you do that? Well, James goes to, uh, is in his second year at Mountain View College. Great. And Marcy is a freshman in Grand Prairie High School. So they are both still teeners. Yes. Teenagers. All right, now you didn't mention too very much about Arthur Joseph. Did he go to Grand Prairie schools? He uh, is a graduate of Grand Prairie High School. You have his graduation year in your memory? If you don't, that's fine. No, don't think. That's all right. <laughs> and after he graduated from Grand Prairie High School, uh, what did he do? He took some courses at Mountain View College also. All right, okay. And uh, what does he do for a living now? Uh, he helps me in real estate. He's uh, a very good uh, um, a remodeler. In fact, he has his own remodeling business. Oh, that is great. Joe Waddell Remodeling. All right, and you mentioned Madeline Vaughn Waddell, your daughter-in-law. Now, we'd like to hear about her because I see her around town. I see her in real estate. She's also a realtor, and uh, she also has her broker's license. Oh, good. And um, um, she has served as past president, well, she is past president of the Women's Council of Realtors, mm -hmm. and I'm a past president of the Grand Prairie Board of Realtors. All right, now the Vaughn name, uh, where did uh, 
uh, Arthur Joseph Fine, Madeline Vaughn. In high school. In high school. They uh -huh. met each other in high school. Yes. Her family, the Vaughns, are here at Grand, Grand Prairie residents. Would you like to name drop her parents? Um, I know them well, but I, I, her mother's name is Wanda. All right, Wanda Vaughn. Uh -huh. Okay, now that we have the children and the grandchildren all squared away, and we've talked a lot about Judge Waddell, we haven't gotten to the nuts and bolts of Verna Waddell. Verna, a wonderful person as far as community service is concerned, the charter member of at least three or four clubs that I know about, uh, name some of the clubs that you're involved in, especially the charter ones. What got you started in your first club work? And look out into your camera and do that for us. All right. I, I, the first one was uh, Business and Professional Women's Club because uh, our landlady, Alice Wagner, was a member of the Oak Cliff Business and Professional Women's Club. And she actually organized the Grand Prairie one and got me interested. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, she was the first president, and lo and behold, they asked me to be president the next year. Well, so wonderful. as well as being a charter member, I'm the second president of it, and have served as president three different times, because that was in 1949, uh, I believe. Wonderful. So you It was 49 when I was president. It was 48 when it was uh, organized. All right. And then I, I'm a past president of the Federation of Women's Clubs. That was the next one I became involved in. And, um, of course, I've been a seroptimist now for some 38 years. All right. Tell us, what is seroptimist? The best for women. The best for <laughs> so women. So it's a coined uh, word meaning best for women, optima. Mm -hmm. So, Soroptimist. And you were the president, but you were not the founding president of Soroptimist? No, Stella Rohde was the founding president, and then Ruby Miller was next, and Romy Stewart, and I was the fourth president. Fourth president, and, uh -huh. and the Soroptimist stuff is still going on down on uh, Southwest Dallas Street That's in their right, own house? in their own house. And you've seen that grow from a small group to a large group of the to house? To some over 50 membership now. Mm -hmm. And it is... Uh, uh, stimulating. It is a wonderful club. All right, now we know about your community service. Tell us a little bit about the First Methodist Church, then we're going to get to real estate. <laughs> well, First Methodist Church, I'm on the Board of Stewards. I'm president of my Sunday school class, at which I'm, of which I'm very proud. Mm -hmm. We have a very good fellowship in our class, and we have uh, um, a growing interest. Oh, and I'm also attending the Disciples. Uh, Bible study mm -hmm. and our associate pastor uh, Reverend Renfro is our teacher in that, oh, well, that and it's cool. most interesting. All right now I do know that we have something here about the daughters of the American Revolution and you would not fail to mention that and show us what no, you have to I'm show I'm not there. a charter member but I am a member of the daughters of the American, Revolu daughters of the American Revolution and this is how you have to show your lineage back from from your time, you have to go generation by generation. And my um, ancestor is uh, Joseph Brillhart. And we had a little bit of trouble because Joseph, uh, there's a Joseph Brillhart and a Joseph Senior, a junior. So the junior we found by Senior's will to tie it all together. Because you have to do this by document. It has to be documented. And what office have you held in the DAR? I'm past region of our local chapter, and I've been served in most of the other offices in it. This is a little uh, by-play on that, though. Uh, instead of just going back to the 1750s, this is a brief I think going back to the 1448, I'm the 17th generation from the beginning here. In the Brills. Uh-huh. That Brill is heart. in the Brill and then the Brill Heart. Uh -huh. Also, you have mentioned the picture of the worthy matron and patron. Uh, what organization is that now? That's we Order of the Eastern Star. Three minutes and we need to get all of this. This in. is Order of the Eastern Star. All right. Order of the Eastern Star. And that relates to... 
the Masonic the, Lodge? It's the wives, mothers, daughters, sisters, or widows of, of Mason. Of Masonry. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we wanted to be sure and get that in. Now, in about three minutes that we have left, when you moved your office from across from the First Methodist Church, why did you go with your real estate business? We bought the property where we are located, or where I'm located now, at 300 Hill Street. Uh, it is uh, an antique uh, building. In fact, we're told that the Grand Prairie High School Band used to practice in that building because the first high school, Grand Prairie High School, was just to the no south of where it's located. Is that the old Whitley home? I'm not sure about that. not sure about that. All right, Verna, uh, being in real estate in Grand Prairie for 40 plus years, were you one of the first women realtors in our city? I don't believe so. I, realtors, probably yes. Uh, Isabel Norwood uh, was also a charter member of our board of realtors, uh, and she was in business, I believe, a little bit longer than I was. All right. But you are probably the longest standing one at this time. I'm one of the three charter members still living uh, in the board of directors. All right. What are those three? Henry Templeton and uh, uh, Doug Motley. Are the other two? Uh -huh. That and is I. wonderful. That's a salute to you. And what uh, in the real estate business uh, has been the most exciting thing that you have seen come down the pike in Grand Prairie, Texas in real estate? Oh, there have been so many developments. I think the one that I uh, enjoyed most, and this was early in my career, I sold the land that the Lutheran Church uh, was built on just north of, of Small Hill mm -hmm. Street now, and I made a thousand dollar commission, and I was asked what I was going to do with it, and I said, I'm going to Hawaii, <laughs> which we did. You did. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, Verna, in the, about the last minute that we have, would you, we have exactly one minute to wrap up, look out and tell them what you really think of Grand Prairie, how you love it, or what? Well, I'm very happy that circumstances uh, brought us to this community because I have thoroughly enjoyed it and I'm still enjoying it. I have wonderful friends here and wonderful associations. Verna, we want to thank you for taking the time today to come and put the Brill, Hart, and all of the Waddell information on our genealogy tape, our tape number 90. This is our 90th tape that we have done and we want to thank you for adding gloriously to our history. Thank you for inviting me. And this is Ruthie Jackson reminding you and letting you know for sure that history is as we live and do. <laughs> and if you want to throw your grandbabies a kiss, you may. Okay.